Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the February 10th, 2021 Abington Finance Committee meeting. Uh, we are continuing our series of meetings uh, with department heads in preparation for the fiscal year 22 budget. Uh, tonight, uh, we have a fantastic slate of departments here with us. We have our Board of Health and board, our Health Director, Marty Golightly. We have our Building Department and our Building Inspector, Marshall Adams. And we have our Joint Waterworks with uh, our Chair, Chief Joe Lapointe. Uh, so we are going to head right into these meetings. Um, and we are going to start, as you can see on the agenda that's being shared, with our uh, Board of Health Department. And Marty, how are you doing? How's everything going? I'm sure it's been a very quiet year for you. Oh, yeah. Nothing, nothing. Okay. Going. Nothing much going on. Yeah, it's, it's a, you know, we are continuing to fight the good fight, right? But thank, thanks for asking. I'm doing well. Hope everybody else is also doing well tonight. Doing well. Oh, good. Thanks. So, what's the what's the department been up to? Well, we've had a lot of success with uh, our vaccine clinics at both of the uh, senior center and at the EDS site, which is our high school. Uh, I'm very proud of the work that we've been doing over there. I have a dedicated crew of excellent team members and volunteers that uh, service the community and. And I'm very proud of them and I'm proud to be associated with them. Um, it's a lot of work and we are ready and willing to do even more as soon as we get some more vaccine for our current priority is uh, priority one in phase two, which is our 75 and older. Um, we are doing uh, as many clinics in Abington so our people can get there and go to places they're comfortable with and see people they know and people that they are comfortable with as many as we can. Um, I, I want them to have to tell me to stop um, because yeah. uh, I, I know our 75 older crowd wants to stay here. They want to go see Suzanne over at the senior center. They want to see us yep. give them the shot. So we're going to okay. continue to offer it as best we can. Excellent. Thank you. Do have the first responders also been vaccinated at this point for Abington? The, the vast majority of them. We had a second, we had a second dose clinic today uh, that went awesome. mostly without incident. Um, we'll have another one next Wednesday. We kind of broke up the first responders that, uh, at the chief's request because we didn't want all of the first responders doing it one week. And then, you know, if anything bad happened, we'd have to, you know, lean on mutual aid, right? So we yep. did uh, a, a cadre uh, one week and we'll do the second cadre the next week. And uh, so far, so good, knock on wood. Um, nice, good to hear. Awesome. Um, I, I just had a question about um, I, what was the reason that they um, weren't able to give you more vaccines this week? Uh, um, honestly, I'm not really. Yes. Sure. I'm not really <laughs> sure. Uh, it just got denied, or um, do they not have enough? Our request was denied, and I'm sure if we asked our, our counterparts at the state, it was because that the state is not receiving as, as much as they would like. Mm -hmm. But the, the water's a little muddy, uh, a little gray there. So we have asked for clarity. Uh, and more important, we've asked for more vaccines this week. We should find out tomorrow what the number we'll get this week is. Does that make sense? So we, we yep. yes, one absolutely. Day, and then we find out usually by Friday, Thursday night or Friday night, how many we're going to get. If it's a zero again, it's it's not going to be good. No. Mm. Are you getting them like through Brockton Hospital or just directly so, applying yourself? Yeah, we have a partnership with uh, the EMS director at Dan Muse over at the Brockton Hospital and and a bunch of as many as twelve other towns in our little area uh, mm -hmm. that work under his license for our EMS directors and for our uh, firefighters and paramedics. So we've gotten uh, doses from there and direct delivered directly to us. Um, we were lucky in that, I mean, I've had, I had a little experience with this when I was in the military and I kind of, you know, when, it, when we, when we kind of saw the writing on the wall to start getting ready for this kind of thing. So our drive-through emergency dispensing site was approved as early as June of last year. Our walkthrough EDS site was approved a couple of years ago because we've always stayed on top of it. So Abington, um, because of the crew that we have in town, 
has been ready to go at a moment's notice uh, and just waiting for uh, you know, that last bit that allows us to execute the plan, the, the vaccine. Um, so we've been ready for a long time. So we've been getting it a, a little through the state and a little through our cadre with uh, um, the Brockton Hospital, but not near in the numbers that, uh, that we requested or, or wanted. And I think there's a, there's a disconnect between some of the places that they think that I'm only willing to service, you know, Abington, but that's not necessarily the case. So we have a lot of our our workers in Abington are Brockton residents, our Randolph residents, you know, so yeah. I don't understand why we would limit it. This, you know, we, the, the more science that gets into arms, the safer we all are. Uh, and and I encourage you to swing by the uh, senior center on one of the days that we're doing one of those clinics. You've never seen them so happy. A lot of them are locked up since April. Uh, yeah. I'm locked up, um, her, but it's true. So they're in there singing, mm -hmm. they're having donuts. They're just so happy to be amongst people again that it was, it was uplifting and incredible. I've heard all very positive feedback um, about the clinic at the senior center. The thing that I'm happiest, happiest most is that it was done safely. Like everything else is great, but we were able to do it 100% safely with no ill effects, no, I want to knock on wood when I say this, but no problems whatsoever. And that was our main goal. Very glad to hear that. Thank you, yeah, Matty. Excellent. I could talk about that all night, Matt. I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> we, we were the ones asking you those questions. So don't apologize for talking about it. Um, so do we want to move into your budget? Yes, sir. All right. Do you want to walk through? Uh, sure. So as you can all see that uh, the salaries is just the increase of uh, uh I would say the, the normal ish mount. Um, I'm sorry, I'm having technical, of course, on the one part that I need to talk about, I'm having technical difficulties. Okay. Um, I, I happily, please, uh, I, as we've done this before, if there's any questions, just interrupt me. Um, there's uh, There should be another page uh, towards the end that we'll probably spend a little bit more time on. The, Rabies, uh, we don't, that doesn't happen until May, and that has been significantly more popular uh, at the years that I've worked here. Um, and you'll see no uh, expended uh, in some of these is because we were able to use CARES Act money for a lot of these things because we use it specifically for things that were uh, COVID related, lots of signage for COVID, lots of advertising for COVID. We printed a bunch of things, but we were able to use CARES Act money for that. Uh, uh, our office budget supply again, <laughs> Uh, most of that we've been able to get through uh, our CARES Act. Um, the increase in travel budget, uh, that we, it's just one of those things that we, we've had to do more and there's a vehicle uh, that the health department was able to acquire and it will need maintenance and fuel tires, those kind of thing. Um, the duties and fees, we have a lot of uh, boards and associations that we're supposed to be part of, MAHOA, MHOA, MAHB, uh, and our You'll see a, a significant increase in the training expense budget because now we, the, with, with Lindsay, the public health nurse, and with myself, our continuing education credits and our continuing education to acquire uh, the certifications that make us the resident experts that we are, are not cheap. Uh, and um, they are vital in that we are using the best uh, and most, uh, the, the, the best and uh, the currently available science to make our public health decisions uh, as best we can. Um, any questions on that first part, Mr. Chairman? Well, the, you said the salaries weren't, the salaries are up almost right. Uh, 85%. I, I believe there's a third page, Sue, if there's, I, I believe there's okay. another page on that, I think. Let me see. It, it, it's, it's basically Lindsay. Yeah, our public health nurse. Because we used to contract, correct, to like the South Shore BNA, and now we have a regular like on staff. Yes, uh, and you want to talk about a significant service upgrade? I can't. It went from it went from one mile an hour to a hundred. Uh, I would not be able to work with the school so clearly. I would not be able to run these vaccine clinics. I mean, uh, and we hired her for part time, but uh, we're basically working seven days a week right now because of the pandemic. Um, so she's in here as a salary employee through the end of the fiscal year next year, because all of this should continue to next year. And we didn't want to rely solely on CARES Act money to fund it, which is what we're doing for this year. 
Um, and I'm not exactly sure when all of this will play out, meaning we'll go back to a regular sense of normalcy. My anticipation is late this year uh, with some lingering ill effects into 2022. Uh, I don't know if that's ready for broadcast, but you kind of, you know, you get the most of the point. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, so normal, do. and normal ish is definitely not a word, but, but you understand what. So do. if I don't have Lindsay on staff, it basically means that I can't put forth as much effort uh, keeping our students safe in schools and working like a, with that, uh, keeping the shot clinics open and basically doing all the contact tracing that we're doing. Abington does the vast majority of our own contact tracing with some cases it has to go to the state CTC just because we can't keep up with the magnitude. Um, so it's, it's a service upgrade that we have an understanding that should we move a, away from like this vast uh, amount of work, we can move back to a part-time schedule. Um, but, but that's really where the, uh, the salary increase came from. It's just adding the services that our public health nurses brought to the table so that we can keep doing this. So, and I think Chris was kind of moving towards this question and, <clears throat> and I, I think Sue can correct me if I'm wrong. I know at the fall town meeting, we definitely approved um, money to bump up, uh, bump her up from part-time to full-time. Um, I don't remember exactly what that amount was. I thought it was somewhere in the vicinity of, of uh, of fifteen thousand dollars. That was our. Um, that was our. She's called the Rico. Basically, my assistant. The okay. uh, recycle. That that's for that's for the trash. That's just basically okay. making her making her a full time employee, uh, not dependent upon grant money. Okay, so that's something different. Yes, that, sir. The, because the and the because when I had the seventy four <coughs> one seventeen. I like got 191, you still up 30,000 above that. But that's because of this. Um, yeah, yes, right. sorry. If I wasn't clear on that, I apologize, forgive me. Yes, that's correct. But then there's the question to Sue, um, is the 74,000, is that other page roll into this one? Or is because on our summary page, the nurse is listed as under a separate toll. Is it, Down is it here, here twice? So he promoted one person from full time to full uh, part uh, from part time to full time, and he also had the nurse that was part time that we now need is full time. But the person that is sort of what he calls the the uh, recycling <laughs> coordinator, she has also taken on responsibilities well beyond um, what her job title was and she is assisting with um other things that go along with um all this COVID stuff yes no i i understand that but as far as the numbers when i look at our summary spreadsheet it lists the health department as one account and then the, the nurse in a separate account right and you and guys don't have the updated spreadsheet no, right. The nurse, but, yeah, the nurse went from like 19 to 19,386, but you don't have the updated spreadsheet based on the requests that he's showing right here. Okay, so here it's going from 19 to 74. Correct. What he just said about the nurse. That's right. Great. But the, the health department is also going up by that 74,000. Uh, the health department should only be going up um, by what the contractual rate is. Oh, okay. So what we have on the on the first line, if you're looking at the the share screen right now, what we have for salaries going up is from one seventeen to two twenty one. Is that not correct? Yeah, you know what? It might not be. I might have put. I might have put his. Um, I might have put the board of health. Um, public health nurse in that number. Okay. That's what I thought. Marty, Marty, did, Marty did not put these numbers in the in the uh, VADAR thing I did. So I might have put it in both places. That's what I was. And I, w I will look at it, but thank you for pointing that out. 
or I did. Uh, <laughs> so, but the the point was that is that I, I think that if we can we can subtract it from the board of health salaries and move it over to the uh, the, the nursing salary. All right. Yep. All right. Good. Sorry about that. No, my fault. Oh, it's okay. We're just trying to get get it clear right. what I, what it actually looks like here. So, I think with that. Um, Things look more. Things are, are are definitely more clear. We know that we know that you've been very very busy. We know that there are definitely expenses going up for you, um, and that's be that's before we even talk about waste management. I've been waiting for this one. <laughs> uh, so I, I we are. I think Scott's on the call. Scott, we sent he's, our... he's, he's not on the call. Um, he had a family emergency that he had to, do, to uh, direct to, but if I can help with anything, Marty, please let me know. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the RFPs went to KP Law today uh, for review, and uh, Angela and our uh, area regional, regional rep, uh, Todd Kep. Have been working very very hard on those so that they are ready to submit um to and that does not preclude us from also renegotiating our contract or just signing an extension with uh republic so uh this is a huge hemorrhage of money uh a lot of it because um uh, I, I think the pandemic is definitely tr contributing to this with uh, a lot more people home and generating a lot more waste in our houses uh, i i we, we did some preliminary numbers where we took uh, a large chunk of data. Uh, we averaged out all of the months to kind of uh, forecast and predict. It wasn't the, the best. You know, I took the average and I, I added the uh, standard deviation to it just to get us just to get an idea. I know that's not the best uh, way to do that. So please don't, you know, throw rocks at me, you finance people. But it wasn't terrible to kind, kind of just get an idea of what we were going to be paying for trash for the next six months and then project it out for another year. Uh, understanding that December and January are typically our highest numbers, but like that's been a little weird because of the pandemic because March and April last year were extraordinarily higher than normal. So, uh, you know, we have, a, we have a specific number for an override and we've been in the neighborhood of 1.4 million for the last two years. Uh, and I anticipate we'll be right at that number this year. Uh, and we want to get that cost uh, significantly lower while maintaining around the same level of service. And we think one of the ways to do that is to put out a couple RFPs and see who, you know, if there are any other companies that are willing to come and provide the same level or better service um, uh, for around the actual override costs, or if there's another way. I know Scott has put together a committee and we're gonna, and, and, and they're gonna look into all of the ways that we can uh, cut that cost. Um, but the rest of that is- Can I ask? Sorry. Sorry. I was just curious if, if one of the ways we're considering would be bringing it in-house. I have no idea if that would save us money, but it seems like it's easier to control long-term costs if we do it ourselves. Yeah, I looked into I, burning the site into a, um, I can't remember what they call it, this, where the, a drop-off location. Um, yeah. Goodness. Uh, and, and that's a long, drawn-out process. Um, and that, and we're not guaranteed for, um, for approval from DEP. So. The short answer is I'm not 100% sure, if I'm being honest. Um, and then there's the buying, the maintaining, uh, the staff to drive it for the trucks. Uh, and then we still have right. to pay to get it hauled away. So without a bit more infrastructure, it would be um, really difficult to do. Uh, I'm not saying I'm, I wouldn't say no to that if the committee, you know, the, the, the committee on on this and the Board of Health wanted to like look into that further. I just it would just be it would be a significant. Sorry about that. The emails and the text messages are nonstop. Um, don't, don't apologize. Just keep going. Yeah. So that so it would, it would just be very difficult to do, but, it, but it's not impossible. Um, so uh, we're, we're looking at all of that. I have a couple of questions, Thanks. Matt. Yep. Go for it, Barbara. Um, okay, so I know we have to go out to bid to change um, vendors. Uh, are we looking to stay with Republic? It just there's been so many issues, um, <laughs> and I understand that. I understand that a lot of it is uh, cost driven, but um, yeah, one of the good things about 
did was we don't necessarily have to take the lowest price if we're unhappy with the service that was provided or the service that was offered. So the short answer is I'm not 100% sure on that either because Republic should be allowed to, uh, uh, to review our RFP and make us a bid. Um, that being said, I had a long talk with the municipal service manager from Republic to, uh, <laughs> yesterday to remind him of his obligation to read his own contract with us to make sure that he's not sending us erroneous bills and that, that he's paying his fines on time. And I am 100% aware and I, uh, I completely understand what you're saying. It is, it is frustrating. Um, the level of services has been subpar, in my opinion. Absolutely. Oh, definitely. Not just with the um, the weekly trash pickup, but um, I myself have had issues with, uh, you know, when you pay for a bulk item um, that took weeks to pick up. And I found so many other people having the same issue, um, not just in a, in a, in a, you know, certain period of time, but just over the course of time. Um, but so the, my next question is, if we do not stay with the Republic and we went with a different company, uh, how does that work with the barrels? Oh, the barrels are ours. Okay. The barrels are ours, we maintain them. Angela, the, um, the RICO and the assistant health coordinator, she does all the maintenance, does all of the delivery. That's one, one person doing all the delivery and all the maintenance on those barrels for almost 5,000 times two, almost 10,000 barrels in town since she does a really good job and she works really hard at it. Um, yes, so I just wasn't sure if you had yeah. to switch barrels when you switched nope. companies or if they try, you know, if they, you don't have to that jacks it. up the price, if, you know. No, actually that's one of our cost saving, like longer term things was that if the town, you know, pays for the barrels then that cost is off the table for the haulers, or at least that, that's as I understand it, that was several years ago. Uh, and that brings us to the third line item down there uh, is the trash and recycling carts and one of the things that we've been really diligent on this year uh, that I wish we would have um, paid a bit more attention to in forever uh, has been the damage caused by the uh, caused to barrels by the hauler, uh, which is not, it's a non-zero number. Um, so we have to continually buy new barrels for uh, new construction or for people adding in-laws or forever. We have to buy new barrels for the ones that are broken uh, some of, and a lot of them are just, uh, they're coming up towards the end of their life cycle, you know, mm -hmm. five, six years. So they have to be replaced anyway, because the wheel's going to fall off or the a lid's going to get broken, uh, animals, whatever. So we, that, I mean, that's, that's a pretty, uh, expensive line item, but we just, it's something that we, I have to continually cycle out, um, as, as they get damaged. So I encourage everybody to call us if they have damaged barrels, but that's the, uh, trash and recycling cart supplies. And the compost site maintenance, we had the compost, there's a, that large uh, middle pile of, of leaves and sticks and things was turned over and ground up this year. Um, mm -hmm. the first year since, uh, since I've worked here that, that we actually were able to do that. Uh, and all, all of the wood pile was uh, ground and actually turned into mulch. So we'll actually have some, some mulch for some people um, in the spring, which will nice. which will be nice, yeah. Um, and that's, that pays for that. And we also get assistance for grants from that. So uh, that's helpful. Uh, the Sharps disposal, um, some of that we can use for CARES money because we're doing uh, COVID shots. Some of that we can use for FEMA reimbursements to get it. But the Board of Health in Abington is a safe drop off place for needles uh, as long as they come in in Sharps containers. And that's one of those state mandated things. Yep. Uh, our hazardous waste, um, those are our big hazardous waste. <coughs> Um, as part of our as part of our uh, our place in the South Shore Recycling Co-op, uh, typically we host one or two of those a year, and we have an obligation to either pay for a certain level of uh, service, whatever whatever it is. Are those numbers correct for hazardous waste? Seven thousand last year and seven hundred this year. Is one of those wrong? Sue, I think that should have stayed the same. Okay. Actually, I might, be able to, I might be able to cut some cost there, but I think it was say the same. It did that's it, it did say the same. That's when you drop off like uh, ba uh, the batteries and, and hazmat at the. Yeah, I, I was expecting that to stay the same. I'm yeah. guessing that's just a, either an extra a, zero, a drop or zero, a drop zero, or a drop zero. So. But you haven't done any of that this year. 
Uh, we, we, we did, but we were part of a tri-town in uh, Whitman. Okay. So there's we, no we, expense here. So we should, I, I'll, I'll have to check and make sure that we got the bill for that. Okay. Uh, Time. And, we, and we still will do another one in the spring. Uh, I don't know if you, last year we did a, uh, anything with a plug day. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the, we use that. We use a little grant money and some of that too. And are we doing that again this year? I'm sorry. Are we doing that again this year? That anything with a plug uh, day? I'm making a fingers crossed face. Um, oh, okay. Cause I've been watching for it. <laughs> I, I, I want to, uh, mm -hmm. I, I'd like to get a handle on, uh, the pandemic a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't want to put my, uh, I think the short answer is yes, but I just don't know when. Right. Yeah. Makes so, sense. Resources. Yeah. yeah so and people love it. People loved it. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the ways you save money in this fiscal year, you're not counting on being able to do again next year. Oh, one more time. I'm sorry. Well, so like the, com the, the compost, you were able to save money this year versus budget, but you're not counting on being able to do that next year because you left the budget where it was, even though we haven't, we, we're not going to spend that money. Well, right. I can't guarantee that we won't if it's a large amount uh, of drop off this year. Yeah. Okay. And, it, and it's something that should have been done. And I'm not 100% sure why it wasn't. Uh, it's one of those learning processes for me, not having a lot of background in compost. Okay. If, so the 10,000 in, in that budget item is there just in case. If you're able to do it a couple of years in a row, maybe it can go down the next budget cycle. That, yeah, I actually, yeah, that's not a bad idea. I'll look into that. Sue, can we, can we look into that tomorrow? Is that possible? I'm of sure. Course. And the dues fees at the bottom of the page is for our continued involvement with the South Shore Recycling Co-op, which is our local area partners that they do some of the collective bargaining for all of the vendors in, in the area and that we have that we, we get grant money for being a part of and they you know help us with our green community and all of the programs that um, we are a part of yes and then we already talked down here about the public health nurse nursing i have um one more quite well another question <laughs> i like that you uh <laughs> didn't restrict yourself to only one more question. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to know what the cost is currently per ton for trash and then per ton for recycle? Uh, recycling is a moving target because it's yeah. either a commodity or we have to pay for it and we've had to pay for it since uh, uh, China soar two years ago, two and a half years ago. Um, so I think I'd have to check the latest bill. I think it was, it was up yeah. over a hundred. Yeah maybe 111 uh, and uh, trash is 8950. Uh, I'm, I'm quite positive on that number, but I'll happily send you an email with the exact one. But we are still paying more to um, dispose of, to take care of recycle than we are trash now. So oh yeah, yeah, we are. And, and I have a great fear of that, that if we would ever to get rid of uh, recycling curbside that we would never get it to go back. And that yeah. when recycling commodifies again, when somebody figures out a way to make money on it, whether that be uh, or what, if our relationship with China cools or warms or whatever you want to call it, uh, and then the, like, the ships that are dropping off goods can get filled up again with uh, American recycling for next to nothing. And that value, instead of you know costing us something that commodifies, then we would lose out on that. So it's one of those things where We'll lose a lot of grant money if we just kick uh, recycling and we'll there. I don't even, I'm not even sure if legally we could do it, uh, yes. but it is higher to recycle than it is to trash currently. Mar Marty, just a quick question for my notes. Um, that 89.50, is that 8,950 no, per ton? $89.50 per ton. Thank you. And 111 for, yeah. thank you. That's what I said. But I reserve the right to send emails to correct that. <laughs> yeah, I would. Know, I would never. Are, those are those are approximates. Thank you, Pat. I, I definitely wouldn't uh, 
suggest, you know, uh, getting rid of recycle. It's taken so long to train yeah. everybody. And uh, Greg, on the other hand, would. <laughs> but uh, and just environmentally um, also. But also, I don't think that you by town you can't anyways. It's a it's a law. You would have um, to get a waiver from the state. Right, which I don't, I don't think which they're they just going to start handing out waivers for that because everyone's as, in the same position. Yeah, as we've discussed before, the state is uh, reluctant to give waivers if people even apply for them. So, um, But so that kind of answers, well, so my other question would be, what do you think uh, time frame, um, what do you think the likelihood is of, of that turning around and of um, either us... Do you hear any buzz about that? About um, I no, I, I no. have no buzz. Um, and I wish I had better news on that front. Thank you, I appreciate it. My pleasure. And if you have any other questions, I can nerd out about that all day. So if you ever want to uh, talk about it, please swing by the office or give me a call. Great, thank you. Anyone have other questions for Marty? No one. Greg is awfully quiet. We'll let Marty go then. I'll take it. Marty, appreciate your time. Appreciate everything that you are doing. Uh, I know it's been a really, really, really long year that probably to you feels like an entire career all in one year. You're absolutely uh, correct. We very much appreciate the work that you're putting in and everything that you're doing. It's my absolutely. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. And give me a call if you have any questions, please do. Thank you, Rudolph. Thanks thank for you. your time. Thank you. Bye. All right. Next up, we have our building inspector, Marshall Adams, who has been uh, patiently waiting for his turn. Hey, so, his budget. Marshall, how you doing tonight? Pretty well, very good. How's everything going in the building department? Uh, a lot of people are home, a lot of zoning issues. People seem to have time to look and look at their neighbors and everyone's looking at each other. <laughs> and have, uh, one person's complaining about this, that, and the other thing. And uh, yep. they have a lot of time on their hands to uh, call back. And I thought about this and uh, it's, uh, but we're, we're getting through it. Um, we have, uh, Big change up here with regards to uh, salaries. Um, you'll notice that the overall budget through the general fund is roughly 107,000 more than it was last year. The reason being, we uh, we had a split of fees. Um, right now, it's 50-50. Half of it goes to the general fund, and half goes into a revolving fund to pay uh, salaries. It allows for, it used to, or it does right now, allows for me to, if we have a, a reduction <clears> in demand for permits, inspections, et cetera, I can back the hours off of the people that are working for me um, on a part-time basis and uh, increase them if uh, need be. Um, so we're not on a straight line, depending on what happens with the building. And uh, Sue, and Scott have decided that all funds, now they weren't deposited into the general fund. So all the salaries are now shown um, on the spreadsheet here, which is, which is an increased uh, about 107,000. There's no, nothing different with the town, it's just being paid differently. Um, at any rate, um, the, uh, the salaries starting if we want to run down on these, uh, uh, the commissioner's salaries, the managers association um, that's mandated. Um, yep. The gas inspector is uh, based on the hours we've been paying him on the average um, at his hourly rate. And uh, as well as the plumbing inspector same thing as the hours have been paid. Um, commissioner two weeks buyback, that's manager's association um, mandated. Um, wiring inspectors based on the hours that they've been paid. 
um, through the year. Um, the uh, Terry salary um, is a union agreement. Uh, her buyback is union agreement. Her health insurance not purchased uh, is union agreement. Uh, the part-time building inspector is based on the hours he was working. Where uh, the it says BT clerk, it's really IT and scanning. We're going from um, all paper to scanning and online permitting. And uh, she's taking care of the scanning of the old documents of which we have hundreds of years of stuff. Well, actually since the seventies, really about 50 years worth of documents and keeping up with what's currently going on. And that was uh, paid through obviously through the, uh, the split, but now it's back here. And the part-time zoning enforcement agent, um, that's based on the hours that we pay her as well. Um, the, uh, emer this other compensation budget, uh, emergency uh, inspections. Uh, Marshall, if I can, if yeah, I can sorry. pause you there just for a second so no that, problem. um, Sue can, can weigh in on, uh, the, the reasoning behind that. Um, basically he, we got his department to where he needed to be um, with the uh, revolving account and um, we're not cutting any of his staff or any of his requests, um, but the extra money that's going, that has been going into that revolving account needs to help generate our revenues for these upcoming years with the fact that um, we've been short on our marks due to COVID. So essentially the, the revolving fund has been taking in more than, than what has been needed to pay out. That's correct. And so we're looking to have the, that department help the, the rest of the town now in a, a leaner time. Correct. It was a 65-35 split, excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, uh, last, uh, town meeting, they they changed it to a 50-50 split um, and uh, scooped up some money out of that to put into the general fund. Uh, and that's how it did accumulate. We were very, very busy. Um, and it um, was accumulating faster than we were spending. It. And uh, I think Sue and Marty took it away. And... Uh, <laughs> so um, um, but that can only be used to pay those salaries, right? Right. At or I guess it can be scooped out and um, used for however you see fit with the general fund. I wasn't aware of that. But. No, I mean, I mean the the um, building inspector, the, the um, building department can only use that revolving account to pay the salaries. It's my understanding. Um, I was okay. going to talk to uh, Sue about. Uh, the wide format scanner that we have to have to scan larger blueprints, et cetera, and see if that could have been funded through that account as well. But uh, that's a moot point at this juncture. Got it. Other compensation budget appropriation is uh, emergency inspections. We average out about being called uh, whether it's myself, uh, my local inspector, or the uh, typical wiring inspector gets called out during the year to do emergency inspections and when the cars drive into houses and buildings and that sort of thing. Um, uh, building inspection longevity, that is the manager's association, um, that's mandated. Uh, building inspection sick leave, two days paid plus $50 incentive to come in to work even if sick, which is not, that's a union agreement, it is what it is. Uh, building inspection close, uh, that's managers association mandated. Um, we have uh, education and training uh, required to maintain uh, our licenses, whether it's uh, construction supervisor's license, a plumbing license, a gas license, my uh, building official, 
um, licenses, um, the, um, and it's all just continuing education. Um, you know, we have to have, maintain a certain amount of hours to maintain our licenses. Yep. The only thing out of this that could be canceled is the Commissioner Continuing Education 350, it should be 360. And that's 10 bucks short, no big deal. And then the uh, UMass lodging, I will not be going out to UMass. Uh, they have three day um, training um, and I stay at the UMass hotel. Uh, it's a very large event, a um, lot of good information, but that isn't gonna be happening. Uh, it didn't yep. go last year and won't go this year. Um, so that's a possible for a cancel for you guys that are for the smile. Uh, other professionals, uh, the building code books, we're going to wind up buying uh, $1,100, $1,200 worth of books, new books. They love to sell books. Um, I don't have any choice. We have to buy them. Um, postage is low. Mostly we use the sheriff now. I used to mail out when I had uh, to issue a, uh, an order. Uh, stop order, something like that. I'd mail it out. Well, they wouldn't, or the apartment, uh, illegal apartment, anything like that. Um, what, dumping water on somebody else's property, what have you. Uh, when they know they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, uh, they're going to see that they see it in the mail and they don't pick it up. And that doesn't work out well for us. So we, I use the sheriff. That's why that's so low now. Uh, printing budget, uh, weather cards, stop work orders, business cards, that type of thing, $1,000 bill. Um, that's an ongoing thing. You've got to have those. Office supplies, $1,200. bucks. It's nothing extra. It's just paper and pencils and all, all the rest of the uh, printer ink and all that kind of stuff. Um, we have a small photocopier um, scanner. Um, that's, uh, that's the 2000 bucks, and that's to scan just regular sized stuff. Then we have the large format um, scanner that we have to scan all of the blue, regular sized blueprints, and uh, along with the uh, cloud based storage um, for all of this uh, information has to be backed up and stored on a computer. Like, they call it the cloud. Um, building Thanks. inspection. Uh, that's, I think, going to be paid for the wide format scanner. I'm not sure I got to check with Sue if that is going to be put in, able to be put into this COVID business and whatnot, along with uh, um, the, we are now working towards uh, in, uh, permitting, e-permitting, and that may also be worked into um, through the COVID money, um, at least for a year, I think. But I got to check with Sue on that. Um, I uh, part of my deal working here is that uh, uh, I get uh, a car, and that's fuel for the vehicle, and I can use it just to go back and forth and to related work stuff. Um, vehicle supplies, parts, tires, a couple thousand bucks, a little bit high, but I'm driving the an old Bronco or Explorer with a 230-something thousand mile, 233 on it now, I think. Um, inspection budget supplies, uh, flashlights, tape measures, that kind of stuff, miscellaneous stuff we burn through, lose, drop, wreck. Um, travel budget, uh, we have uh, plumbing, gas, electric, and my local inspector um, get uh, a stipend of uh, the local inspector. He's one guy, he gets uh, 100, 1200 bucks a year, and the electrical inspectors get, um, uh, there's two of them, they split it up. They'd get 12, one person would get 1200 each of them gets six, and uh, the plumbing and gas inspector gets 50 bucks a month as well. Um, uh, dues and fees, um, plumbing and gas licenses and uh, Gas Fitters Inspectors Association, they belong to, I belong to, uh, uh, as well as my local inspector, Southeastern Mass Building Officials Organizations, that works for continuing ed as well, uh, and um, 
credits for uh, CSL licenses as well. I belong to, it doesn't cost anything, uh, federal um, uh, association as well uh, on the board with that. Electrical licenses uh, um, and my CSL and um, that's all just affiliated organizations and um, fees for those. And then down the bottom, we've got the $400 worth of uh, sheriff serving papers um, with signatures rather than the post office. And that works much better with legal with, uh, with our council. And uh, that's about the end of that, I guess. Do uh, you have any questions? Questions? Uh, I do. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, Marshall, I was wondering um, how inspections are going. I know at one point you were kind of playing catch up. Do you, are you finding an increase or a decrease due to COVID or how's that going? Um, we uh, Like business inspections and restaurants and that yeah, type of thing. We have, uh, we stood off of those uh, in large part because we were trying to limit going into um, occupied buildings, um, it just wasn't an advisable thing to do. Um, right. And <clears throat> so to some extent, some of the stuff um, that wasn't dangerous, we put on um, and just because it, it wasn't good. And then I guess it was well, we all had a discussion with regards to going into occupied structures. People were catching them and the virus was, seemed to be increasing and there was uh, concern. And Absolutely. The, uh, I don't know what has happened with the uh, Boston Water Regulations and Standards. Uh, a year and a half, two years ago, they pulled the, um, the inspectors out of the Division of Public Safety and put them under the Division of Licensure. I don't know. It was just kind of a disrespectful thing, but I, I don't really know why. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, we've got the first responders and uh, well, before that we had the healthcare people, the people who have taken care of the sick people, then the people that are bringing the sick people in. And, and Marty has his list and you guys have all seen it. And we weren't on it. And I said, well, I responded, uh, I want to say, three weeks ago to a house uh, that called by the fire department. <clears throat> and uh, there was uh, an, what the deputy thought was probably an illegal apartment. He wanted me to come down and take a look. Smoke detectors, and uh, there was a cook station for drugs in there, and a guy that had passed out just after he dialed 911 low on blood sugar and everybody was there. There was the DEA was there, the ambulance, the fire, the police, uh, my wiring inspector, I was there, Marty was there. And I was looking at it and I said to uh, my electrical inspector, you know, in this house, uh, this apartment area was, uh, I didn't want to be there. Um, it was not a good place. And mm. it looked like something out of that Breaking Bad show. Um, oh, boy. And they're explaining all the yeah. stuff to me. And this is a sweeper. And this is a cooker. And this is, I mean, there's uh, things and hanging and tubes. And I'm there. Oh, man. I says, look, this isn't me. And I, I don't need to. I, this is, uh, I says, I'll go back to the office and let you know what we got with regards to the apartment. And Chris and I are the only ones there who haven't uh, had the shot. Mm -hmm. I said, this isn't a good idea. Uh, I called the Federation and whatnot. Well, I says, you know, this isn't, this is uh, not a good idea. And I talked to a bunch of other people. Well, fortunately, Marty put me on um, and one of my, a uh, couple of my inspectors. So now we can go in and show up and go into these places. We're waiting for our second shot, which won't be till March 5th, but um we're moving forward and we will be able to go into these places assuming this vaccine works and uh, take care of those and catch up on those other inspections that hadn't been done. But until we get uh, 
uh, some immunity. I didn't think it was a good idea, to be honest. And I'm not, I'm not going to order some of my people to go into something, into a situation like that. It's just, uh, I, I never forgive myself if something happened. Very understandable. And these are definitely some of the things that you don't think about, you know, um, in, in different departments, um, you know, that you are going into people's homes and you are going to situ into situations where, um, there, you know, there, there's a whole crew there. So those are definitely some things. Yeah. Um, I'm bringing it into somebody's house or I'm picking it up in somebody. And you don't want to be doing that. Um, um, and are you able, um, have you needed to, or, or does Sue handle the, um, like getting re reimbursed for anything, uh, like th through CARES Act money, um, anything that you've had to um, expend extra, you know, that's directly due to COVID that you can get um, CARES Act money for, or does that not so much uh, apply to you? Than, um, electronic permitting, um, and they're encouraging that, and that will be CARES Act money. Um, and I'm wondering about this pr uh, printer scanner thing too, because that may be required, uh, but I don't know if it would be covered or not. Um, to encourage, or I guess I should say discourage people from coming into the building and having face-to-face um, -face contact where it can be done um, through uh, electronically. Um, and that's, uh, so that's what's being encouraged. Um, and it was brought to my attention and then, oh, we need to have it done by blah, blah, blah. And so we're pushing forward very hard. We're uh, getting close to getting, getting online and we'll make the deadline. Um, but that's been kind of a grind as well. We have meetings every Thursday, uh, uh, several people and putting together the uh, applications and how they should uh, work and how it should pop up based on what you choose you're going to be doing and kind of a complicated thing. I would have thought the people that have done this and other towns I've talked to that are using the system we're going to be using would have, I would have thought they would have known a little bit more about different situations, but they didn't and they weren't, or these other towns weren't aware of the different laws that are required with us. Says, you can't do that, you have to do this. And well, this town does, well, I said, well, that's not the way it is, but we're working through it. And I uh, got another morning meeting, I think it is uh, uh, nine o'clock tomorrow morning. We have another one on. So. Marshall, how much um, how much do you drive the truck a year? Uh, I never paid much attention to it. It's thirty five miles, uh, seventy miles a day, just going to and from work, and then you know I don't know another ten, twenty uh, something inspections. So I'm guessing uh, uh, that's uh, seven times five, three fifty, um, probably I don't know four hundred fifty miles. Something four fifty five hundred a week plus uh, when I have to go to meetings, um, I would guess so. Probably twenty five thousand miles a week, I'm, I, a year, I would somewhere in that vicinity, I would guess. Got it, Marshall. Do you have any um, thing, any consideration for a, a vehicle like on the capital plan? Uh, they give after the police department is through saving the world. They give me one of theirs. All right. And they haven't got anything new uh, recently. <clears throat> uh, I'm looking for something. Um, uh, Jackie Kane's looking for the next one that comes in that's decent. Okay. They Didn't they give up a pickup about, truck or something last year? Thousand miles on them, I think. Hmm. I'm sorry. What? I was just saying. I I thought the. Police department gave up a pickup truck last year. It was older, but it didn't have a ton of miles on it. That's kind of what I recall. Um, but maybe it went somewhere else. It, it didn't come to me, and it wasn't offered to me. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I don't have a problem driving around in, in this vehicle. Um, it's uh, it's sooner or later. Uh, you know, 200. And, I think it's 233. I'm due for an oil change next Monday. Um, actually, it's due this Monday, but we had a little snow, so. That didn't work out, but um, yeah, it's uh, the if it dies before something comes up, they're gonna put me in that uh, that red uh, red crown 
a maroon crown dick and the tranny, the tranny's ready to drop out of that thing. So hopefully we'll just limp through and it'll last until something comes up. Hopefully. The, uh, Chris, I think you had questions. Yeah, the uh, the wide print scanner uh, you being added this year. What have you been doing up until now? Oh, we had it uh, for I don't know uh, three months, something like that. Okay. All right. Because since, since we started getting into the scanning because we were just inundated with files. Um, there was no more place to put any more uh, file cabinets. We're going to have to move out of the building. Um, oh, I no place else because there was yeah. no place to put anything. So we got all to right. scan all the stuff. Um, so that started before, um, okay. and then, um, then this COVID and uh, kind of doubled right on it. I'm going to try and see if I can talk to Sue about putting that into the COVID so they could pick up some of that, but I don't know whether it'll block. So you, you're taking stuff that's been on documents and, and now turning it into electronic records. Correct. Okay. All right. I understand. Yeah. You know, thousands and thousands of files. Yeah. Will that save money somewhere along the line? Um, Obviously in rent, but well, they, uh, because of records management and uh, those people in town Boston, I thought we'd be able to destroy them because they're backed up, because I'm allowed to scan now a new permit and new plans as long as it's backed up. We don't have to have big paper backups. Okay. So I called the state after we have a slew of stuff scanned. Um, which is put over in the basement of the Prolio, thanks to Jason Lynn and Peter Schaefer, and um, called the, the state, and they said, yeah, you can destroy it. And I said, well, would you send me some documentation that says uh, that that's allowed? And no, they couldn't do that. So I had counsel call in, and it uh, turns out that if that was allowed, all the people that have jobs in the state in terms of records management would lose their jobs. So I think that's why they're not letting us do that. But through attrition, it will be allowed in the okay. future is my guess, but that's just a guess. Okay. I can't see any other reason for it. But it doesn't cost us anything to leave them over at uh, the Prolio anyway. Um, after we've scanned stuff or do stuff right now, we just run it over there and back it up. Uh, just an extra trip, that's all. Any other questions? I don't have any. Anyone else? <clears throat> Russ, Justin, Greg. Oh, no, this time, thank you. All right. Marshall, thank you. We very much appreciate the time. Appreciate all the, the work you're doing. No worries, and I appreciate your time as well. Thanks for your time, Marshall. Have a great night. Stay, stay safe, you guys. Thank you, you too. All right, bye-bye. Bye. All right, and now for the, uh, the heavy hitter of the night, the water department. Joe, how you doing? Good, yourself? Doing well. How's uh, how's year one going? Well, you know, pandemic and everything else, just yeah. like everybody else is saying. So pretty, a pretty average year for you, right? Yeah. We'll get through it. You know, pumping stats are sky high because everybody's home and uh, the bills ain't getting paid. So it's going yeah. work. Yeah. Ugh. But we're maintaining. Uh, last year, we actually finished pretty good, surprisingly, at the end of the year. And then uh, this year we're maintaining, but we're not bringing in as much as we did at this point last year, but we're pumping out more water. So that just says, you know, people can't, you know, they're not paying the bills or they're laid off or whatever. Yep. Joe, um, I know uh, at, at um, 
the tax collector's um, office, they have been doing some things to kind of work with people that, that aren't paying their bills and trying to get them on a payment plan. Do you guys do anything like that to kind of help if out that situation? If it's COVID related um, and they, you know, they have a hardship, mm -hmm. we'll work with them. Um, gotcha. What we do now, we used to shut off water, but now every November we lean whatever's from the previous year. Mm -hmm. so the lien goes on to the taxi. Um, but we have in a couple of occasions, people have called, you know, they make a payment arrangement or, uh, you know, we won't charge them the interest and stuff like that. You know, if they've been laid off, it's COVID related or something like that. Um, we're Cause at least getting something's better than getting nothing. Correct. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, I usually start with my joint budget. Do you mind if I share a screen? Or... Go for it. I'll stop my share. Let me see if I can figure it out. <laughs> All the fun things we learn, right? Yeah. All right. It says the host disabled my screen sharing. Uh, hang on one second. Is uh, Ethan from Abington Cam, are you able to... Turn on sharing for Joel Point. I got it. So, okay. Joe, can you email me that tomorrow? I sure can. Thank you. Can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. All right. So, this is the joint budget. We put, usually put this together so we can get the Avon and Rock on what they're going to pay in the in the municipal uh, intermunicipal, which is the main part of both budgets. Yep. This runs um, all three treatment plants, all the manpower, all our wages and salaries, all our employee benefits, insurance, retirement, everything. Um, wages and salaries went up fifty one eight ninety for con uh, contracts. Employee benefits um, went up 2,000. That was probably license stipends and everything. Um, different um, grade licenses if someone moved up. That's what we anticipate this year. Um, the fuel cost, we went up on 10,000 on that. And then the equipment and maintenance, we went up 20,000. So the total um, joint budget went up 83,979. Um, we will be able to make that back up when we get back to the Abington budget. Um, Abington's portion of that, of the um, 4743 would be 47%, which is up a percent from last year. We go by how much water the year before the towns use. Last year it was 56, uh, I mean, 46 percent for Abington this year it's 47 and 53 percent Rockland pays for the bill um, so if, when I jump over to my Abington budget it's a little different than what you guys put on yours I break mine up a little different but when we get down to the bottom line is I have the same number I had last year due to um, our debt services have gone down so I was able to move that money around. Um, the municipal went up 71,000. That's all the treatment stuff. And then I was able to add some to vehicle maintenance and um, meters, accessories, road repairs, stuff like that. Last year, we kind of laid off at the end of the year with the COVID. We didn't really get much done. So this year, we're kind of behind the eight ball. And now that I have my feet under me, for a year and a half, two years, 
I see where we have to put the money in the infrastructure and I, I see where we need it. Um, you'll see that later on in some of the uh, articles that we're going to put in. But um, basically the, the number is going to stay the same. Hopefully last year we finished up pretty good. Hopefully this year we can do the same. Um, any questions on that part or? Anyone? I don't have any questions. Um, the only issue I might have, Sue, maybe you can answer me this question. On the intermunicipal, um, Abington's portion might go up about 14,000. We don't know that yet. Um, but what I can do is I can take that 14,000 out of um, repairs and maintenance budget. So I'll end up with the same bottom line number if that goes if I have to raise that intermunicipal, is that something that's doable? Or? I think it's okay. I don't think you're gonna to have to raise the intermunicipal because your debt services are going down. Are you talking about to your indirect cost to Abington or your intermunicipal? No, no my, uh, the, the treatment part of the budget might be going up and the Abington portion will be about $14,000. Okay. So I'll end up with the same bottom line number. I'll just have to take it out of my uh, pipes and fittings and something like that. But that's something that can be changed before, like within the next month or so. Absolutely. Uh, until we actually put the warrant out by the constables, you can make some changes in there. All right. I, my bottom number is going to stay the same, but something else might change. Um, any questions on the budget? We can move to articles, if not. Does anyone have questions? Uh, so not so much a question on the budget. I just wanted to, um, I think I ask this every year because <clears throat> people ask and I think um, get answers from other people as opposed to getting the answers from the water department. Um, complaints of the water smelling like chlorine. Can you just explain what, what, what that's due to? That means it's clean. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably the uptick in the flows and everything too. Now you're going to get a lot of chlorine smell because it's not going to be sitting in the pipes as long. So mm -hmm. it's coming right from the plant. You know, so many people are using it, the high correct. demand. Correct. Like we've been, uh, we usually this time of year shut down at 10 o'clock at night, 10 to six, but we've been running an overnight shift since I think June. Wow. 24 seven, at least one plant, just to keep the tags full and the clear wells full and everything else just from the demand. You know. Thanks, Joe. No problem. All right, let me see, stop share. Can everybody see the articles? Do you, um, has anybody seen a copy of these? Or? No, okay. No, they haven't seen them yet, Joe. All right, do you wanna go over them tonight or? If you can, yeah, that would be great. I have no problem. So we have 12 of them. I don't really like to have that many, but we got a lot of work to do. So the first one's 25,000 for the fourth payment on a five-year lease on our backhoe. Um, we got one more year on this after that and that'll be done. So that'll probably be last us a good 10, 15 years after that. Uh, uh, Joe, were you, were you screen sharing? I don't know if yeah, you can you see that sense. or no? I, I can't. No. So you can get me copies of these warrants tomorrow? I can send them, yep. I, I, sent them to, I sent them to Sue today, I think. Yeah, Deb, I can send them to you tomorrow. Thank you. Everybody see that all right? Yeah. Yep, Deb? that's good. All right. 
Um, we said twenty-five thousand dollars for the, for the backhoe lease we entered in two thousand nineteen. We got one more. It was thirty thousand last year, but I think the bill was only twenty-seven, so I cut it down to twenty-five this year because uh, I have I have some left in the last article. Um, article number two. Take, everything's going to be coming out of the ed, undesignated water fund balance, um, hundred thousand dollars with a like amount from the town of Rockland for the purpose of upgrading the finish and wa raw water pumping equipment. Each plant has raw water pumps that actually pump the water from the reservoirs into the treatment plant. Then we have um, treatment pumps to pump it through the treatment process and then the finished water pumps pump it out. Um, we probably each each plant, the Pembroke plant and the Hingham Street plant have um, three pumps for each stage. So it's nine pumps all together. I got in the capital plan $200,000 a year for the next four or five years to, to replace all these pumps. We uh, one pump to replace we just ordered one it was $38,000 to buy the pump. And then by the time you put it in, rewire it with a, um, a new variable, variable frequency drives and everything. So it's um, water efficient, you know, energy efficient and everything. It ends up being between 55 and $60,000 per pump. So what we want to do is jump on this now, you know, replace one in each plant and then next year replace the second one in each plant and so on. So everything's new. Um, the next one's $15,000 with the like amount from the town of Rockland to update our emergency response plan. Um, this is mandated by the Department of Environmental Protection to making everybody do it for fiscal 2022. Um, it's an engineered plan, you hire an engineering company they come in, look at our emergency response, give us suggestions on how to tweak it and update it. Um, and then we move from there. Covers anything from, uh, you know, um, a natural disaster, contamination, anything like that. We have set rules we got to follow for emergency response with the DEP. Um, we had to do it this year. Matter of fact, when the main piping in the treatment plant over at Hingham Street broke in July. And we had to shut the plant down and take water from Weymouth for three days. Uh, that was a big emergency response and hopefully we can address that later on. I got an article for that too, so. Um, next article is from undesignated, $100,000 <throat> with the like amount from the town of Rockland to redevelop and update the treatment system. Um, DEP has come out with new maximum contaminant levels for different contaminants. Um, one of them we had at the Myers Ave treatment plant. So we're in a pilot program study right now. Um, we redid the plant to a different kind of filtration. We went from sand to um, granulated activated carbon and it's supposed to take this chemical out of the water which it's, it's been working fine since October. So once this gets up approved by DEP, we'll have to redo the whole um, way we filter the well water from Myers Ave treatment plant. That's included in part of this. And the other part is just the infrastructure itself inside the treatment plants. They're getting to be 50, 60 years old. Um, all the old piping inside just the environment with the chlorine and, and everything else. It just wears on the on the piping. That's the issue we had at the Hingham Street plant. The 16 inch main feed that comes out of our Clarewell has broken twice in the last two years, um, just due to the, you know, the age and everything else. So we do have this in the capital plan too for the next three or four years, trying to get a couple hundred thousand a year and to basically redo the inside of our treatment plants. Um, I think if we take it piece by piece, I think that's the best route to go, um, as long as we have the money in our reserve. Um, Joe, what's what's the benefit, or is there a cost savings, or um, 
more efficiency um, from going from sand to the the car um, the car no it actually it's going to cost us more money but it's the sand will not take out um, um you're going to hear a lot about this in the next three or four months it's called PFOS chemical. I don't know if you've seen it on TV. They've had it. Um, what it, it comes from firefighting foams. It comes from anything nonstick, your nonstick pans. Um, it's actually in fire retardant in kids' pajamas on your carpet. So it comes from uh, laundry detergent. Um, so it gets into the ground. It gets into the water supply. So the contaminant level used to be 70 parts per trillion was the maximum contaminant level. Well, DEP's lower, lowered it to 20 parts per million. Um, mm. Right now we've tested- Quite the change. Yeah. yeah. So uh, wells at Myers Ave, when we did our first test, it was non-detectable, which means it was under the 70 parts. And then when they just lowered it, they're doing mandatory tests starting April 1st. We went ahead and did our uh, pre-test first just to get ahead of it and see what we were in for. Um, our Myers Ave wells, which had been shut down for a year, so none of this water got out, was 30 parts per trillion, so it's 10 over. That's why we had to redo this pilot program to see if we could, and naturally we've been running the plant and we've been at like four parts per trillion. So it's working well, but it's just gonna be a, a cost. Um, we did apply for a grant through DEP for the design to redo the treatment plant. So knock on wood, maybe something like that will come in. That but, would be good. Um, it's going to be an ongoing thing this year. Um, in, um, right now, I know Weymouth, Holbrook, Randolph, everybody around here has the problem. Um, we did our Hingham Street plant. Our first, um, we got to do back-to-back -back samples. Our first sample came back at 21 we're one pot per trillion over. That means we're going to have to do something with that. Hmm. Um, Pembroke plant came back at five. So <clears throat> knock on wood, we're good down there. But this all is right. all coming things. I'm sure you're going to hear it in, in the, uh, it's going to be publicized. We're going to have to send out notifications and, you know, basically uh, educate the public on, on what it is. Yep. Thanks for explaining that. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Problem. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Next one's um, undesignated fund forty thousand dollars with the amount, like amount from the town of Rockland for the sludge management program. All the water that we treat turns in all the chemical, uh, all the algae and everything we take out of it goes. It once it gets through the treatment process, it gets pumped out to lagoons at the treatment plants. It, it's basically a sludge. So once the lagoons are full, we have to get rid of it. Right now, <clears throat> the last couple of years, we've been trucking it. A company comes in, we load it. They truck it down to the landfill in Bourne, and they're using it to cap the landfill. Um, they can only take so much a year, so we kind of got behind. And now that um, earlier we talked about this PFOS chemical, if we separate that from the water and it gets back out into this lagoon, now they're going to consider it hazardous waste. So we, DEP, everybody's waiting on DEP to ask where are we going to put it. So the forty to eighty thousand altogether, we'll get rid of our lagoons this year, so we're clean, and when we can start fresh. Um, last we had an article in last I think two years ago, and we had money left this year that we used up. So. Um, it's probably going to be $80,000 somewhere around there to get rid of it for now, for this year. And then next year, it'll probably be double. Who knows? It's like the rubbish. You know. um, the next one, this actually is um, $17,560.80 for purpose of a sick leave buyback for one of our treatment operators who retired um, actually, I think yesterday was his last day. Um, this will be matched with the same amount from Rockland. They, their um, contract's 135 days of sick time buyback. I think we have anybody that was hired before 2010 have that in their contract. So that's contract obligation. 
um, undesignated fund balance, $75,000 in Abington for the purchase of water meters. We usually do $50,000 a year. I'm trying to, when we have the money, I want to do more. Meter setups about $250 for a meter setup. So $75,000, you know, it's like 300, 350 meters out of 5,000. That's not, not very many. We also have a line item in the budget that um, covers meters and accessories for all the other different parts we need. But this is just for the meter and the, the whole meter setups themselves. They should be replaced every, any between 12 and 15 years. Um, we're pushing a lot of them now to the 15 year mark. So the more I can get done each year, the better off we are. Joe, do we still have any meters inside of homes? Yes. We do. Very, very few, but we do. Mm -hmm. um, a couple, I'm gonna say in 2008 and 2009, we went to a new meter system um, that was supposed to send all the readings through the uh, Oh, the Picked little thing there, right? The telephone lines and everything like that. I think <clears> we spent like $500,000. This was before my, um, before my time of being in charge. We spent about $500,000 between the two towns and the meter systems don't really work right now. So, mm. you know, we're getting a lot of you no know, readings coming in and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. on account of four waters getting a little high. So the more meters we can replace, the better off we are. Okay. Thank you. No um, the next undesignated 25,000 with the like amount from the town of Rockland to purchase a joint waterworks treatment vehicle. Right now we use the two, 2008 Ford Explorer. Um, this vehicle is used to, uh, we do 30 samples a week. They at different sample points in the, in the system. They drive from point to point. They check all the stations at night. Um, they transport the samples down to the lab. So the car's got to be kind of reliable, especially in the snow and everything else, um, just to get all these samples taken and down to the lab. <clears throat> and the next one is $75,000 with the like amount from the town of Rockland to replace a 2001 international dump truck we have two dump trucks right now. Um, we have a 2008 and we have the 2001 International. Um, as we speak right now, it's in the shop um, getting fixed. But the last couple of years, we just put too much money into it. Um, so hopefully we can get that replaced. <clears throat> uh, the next one, undesignated 25,000 with the like amount of rot. Rockland to purchase an asphalt roller and paving equipment. Right now, in both towns, we sub out all our paving work. Any any digs we do, any leaks we do, we have to have someone come in and pave it. And it's, um, you know, sometimes the highway department will give us a hand, but, you know, naturally they, they've got all their work to do also. So we, we average about $25,000 a year in each town. Now that I have the manpower to do it, if we have the tools to do it, I think it'll save us a lot of money in the long run, having our own equipment, doing it ourselves. Naturally, if we had a big, huge job, we'd have to sub it out, but um, you know, you have a little um, a little service leak that you have to dig and it's a little trench in the sidewalk. It's probably a minimum of $750 for someone to come out and pay it. We can do it, we could probably do it for 200 bucks. But can I ask, um... In, in that case, wouldn't would it make more sense for DPW to request the uh, the paving equipment, and then they have their own paving the equipment. Water department. They okay. have their own, but we're really not. We're we're a joint waterworks. We're really not included in the DPW in Abington. So I'd have to get. If I was working in Abington, I'd have to ask John Stone to do it, and and then if I was working in Rockland, I'd have to ask Dave Taylor to do it. So if Got we it. can buy our own equipment, we, we, can, we can do it ourselves. And I, th I think it, it saves us money. Right now, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, you know, the highway department right now, they, they don't have, um, you know, all the sanders are on the trucks. You know, they don't have the manpower with the snow and everything to give us a hand patch in a trench. 
So what I'd have to do is sub it Got out it. to an outside contractor. Okay. Just something I think in the long run will save money. I mean, I think we'll make our money back in the first year. Uh, next one is from undesignated balance, uh, $25,000 for the purchase of fire hydrants. It's about $2,000 per hydrant. Um, we try to do at least 10, 10, 12 a year, plus whatever gets hit. If something gets hit and we have an accident report, we can go uh, through the insurance company. But these are just replacing old. We, we still have hydrants in there from 1949, 1960, anywhere. Yikes. Yep. So, and the, the fire department. So likes, we do it. The fire department likes it when they're new. <laughs> yeah. So we. We do a certain number of these every year. Is that right? Yeah, we try. I try to do at least twelve. You know, I mean, twenty-five thousand dollars is only twelve hydrants. So. Yeah. I, well, I guess I'm curious if if we do it every year, what? Why would it not be part of? I guess like, would it be a capital plan or or some kind of like just a normal part of the budget as opposed to an article? I usually put it through an article. If, if I include it in my normal budget, um, if. If we have the money in the reserve, we're better off taking it out of that. If I put it into my into my um, budget, I have to cover my budget with um, yes. basically the revenues coming in. You know, from the Got so it. it'll reflect in people's bills. I'd rather our bills would go up. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. instead Got of it. raising the rates, it's better to take it out of reserve, in my opinion. Okay. It's kind of the same thing with the water meters. We try, you know, earlier I said, we try to do a certain amount a year, but I put it in an article right. that way it doesn't come out of the, you know, raise the budget. When you do those pipes, do you coordinate with stone to like redo the, and by the way, if they're not on the street, I didn't know that, but do, do you coordinate with him so he can redo the street? Uh, we replace a hydrant, they're usually the edge of the road anyways. We just dig so down does, with the hydrant. It, it doesn't really, got it, Thanks. Yeah, but like, um, we just did a few years ago, the water mains on Wyman summit, all that. Um, we end up doing the whole thing. We, we do the, we do the paving and everything curb to curb. It's it just all in our bid process. But like if John, you know, now they're digging, if they dig that sewer main, the uh, force main to Brockton, if, if we have, you know, the chance of, of say like Vernon street or something, we could jump in there and, and do our water main before he did his finished paving, we could we can look at that and work something out with him, you know, and it saves the town money on each end. But, all right. So the next one is from undesignated forty thousand dollars for the purpose of continuing our survey and testing in, in accordance with the Commonwealth of Mass. This is. Uh, a drinking water regulation. What it is is anything backflow. And the surveys are different businesses that go in. We send a company in to survey to see if there's going to be any cross connections or danger to our water system. And if there is, they have to put a cross connection device in. Right now, currently, we have 521 cross connection devices in the town of Abington. Those have to be inspected. Some of them twice a year, some of them once a year. Um, we hire a company to come in and do that. And then in turn, we bill out the, um, the business or wherever. Um, so we do end up getting our money back, but we need it um, originally in an article so we can pay the company to come in and do it. And sometimes we don't get our money back because they don't pay the bill. Hmm. It's something we do every year. This year it went up. Um, we have a lot more, we had a new company come in this year and their feedback was that we had to do more surveys in the town because they think there's more businesses out there that should have cross connections and they do not. And I think that's it. Is that all I'm sorry. Me? Quick question, Joe. Who, so oh. who doesn't pay the bill sometimes? Like if we go into say, um, I don't want to, oh, use, like, you know, but like a company, a business. Yeah. yeah and a business or something. Oh. So the company we just bid out charges us $60 per inspection. 
we mm -hmm. charge we charge the company a hundred. Okay. So once the inspections are done, we get a list and then we bill them out. It actually goes on their water account. Anything with a fire sprinkler would have a backflow. Anything okay. Like that, any business like that, or. Um, and then, what's your recourse if they if they don't pay the bill? Well, and it, eventually it'll go to lien. It's just like not lien. paying the water bill. Yep. Gotcha. Thank you. Well, that's a lot. I don't want to make everybody mad at town meeting when we walk in there with twelve articles, but it, I think it's things we have to get done, and we have the money to do it. Um, and I think. I think it's something like 560,000 in articles, and I think I'll still have close to 800 in reserve. I just want to keep that there. If I, I know Sue, um, money hasn't been certified yet. I'm not sure. That is correct. It should be certified within the next couple of days. They have all the documentation they need. So once it's certified, then we'll. we'll hopefully know that we'll have plenty to do it, so. Um, Matt, okay, if I ask another question. Sure. Go, for, go for it, Barbara. Joe, with um, everything going on with COVID, how are you guys um, handling that with, are you all taking separate trucks? Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, okay. right now I have, I have an office worker that is in quarantine because her husband has it. I have, mm. My distribution supervisor has been out for four weeks because his son got it, his daughter got it, then his wife got it, then he got it. Oh, uh, the town of Rockland God. protocol is if you're directly exposed, you're out for 14 days, no matter what. No matter what. Yeah. Um, so um, they're basically following their protocol. Um, other than that, we've had two other people that were out earlier, but... We, we've been maintaining. Um, the office is closed to the public except by appointment, which we haven't had a problem. Um, like you said, we take separate trucks. We're actually borrowing one truck from the highway department now to have everybody in separate trucks. But then with a the couple of guys out, we have trucks. But other than that, like- um, yeah. So are you short on trucks? Like it, 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 how did, did you have to- We we actually borrowing a, a truck from the highway now a little S10 pickup, just so we had an, uh, one for another guy. And um, what about um, water department as far as like COVID expenses and, and um, some of the CARES Act money? Are you, are you able to? We, um, actually, um, we put all that through the town of Rockland. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we ended up getting about, I'm gonna say $6,000 worth of PPE for the um, treatment plants and the offices. And we actually, I think we got paid for um, overtime shifts for the treatment plants because of the water that we've been putting out due to the COVID. Um, it wasn't much money. I think it was like $10,000, something like that. But we have been using it. We've been going through the town of Rockland just so we can keep track of it. And, you know, they've been great with it, so. And last question, I think. Um, uh, is there the ability um, to pay our bills online? Yes, Sonia has set that up. We set that up last. We always had it in Rockland. We set it up in Abington, I'm going to say mid August. Okay. Yeah. I think Good if you public service web, announcement. Yeah, I think if you can go on the website. Um, Don't forget about that window, Barbara. I know we got the window, but we can. <laughs> but for those people that can't get out, <laughs> we get that COVID window. That's it. I, I, I used it the other day myself. It's sorry. They did a good job. Thanks, right. Joe. No problem. Does anyone have follow-ups to Barbara's questions? Or do we think she covered everything? <laughs> the only thing, the only comment I would make is if the what do we do with the police cruisers or trucks or whatever when they're done? Um, if those are what's getting phased out, if other people can take those, uh, it does sound like people maybe need vehicles. Um, I, just don't, I don't know what the answer is, what happens to them. Well, they do go, they, they um, either 
repaint them and, and they go to other departments? Is that what yeah, you mean? They, yeah, they they kind of cycle them through depending on who, who has the need. I, I think Sue, Scott would probably talk to that. Sue, I don't know how uh, involved you are with that, but it, there's there's usually a list of who needs what and when things- Yeah, they're usually repurposed to other departments. Uh, when things go offline for like the front line, like police or, or whoever it's with, there's there's a, a queue of who it goes to after that. I know. They're, right, I know they're, usually, they're usually repurposed to other departments. I know in our case, the last couple of years, um, we've got new pickup trucks. They've actually gone to the highway department. Now they're plowing snow. Mm -hmm. about, we, I think there was two trucks we sent there in the last four years that they've repurposed. So if, if they're repurposed, I guess I'm, I'm, how many of them are currently being used? I know I've sent two from the water department um, to the highway. I don't know how many, you know, other police cruisers or whatever. I'm only saying because every year it's either two, three, or two. So we should have, you know, hundreds of these things at this point. Oh, a, lot of, a lot of times. Um, they're only, I mean, they're not good for everyday use. I mean, anything I'm sending down there has got over 250,000 miles on it. I'm mm -hmm. sure the police cruises have 300 and something. So I basically, I think it's Jack Kane's call, whether what's worth sending to surplus or what's worth re, you know, reusing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not speaking for Jack. That's just what I, you know, what I think goes on. Yeah, it's definitely the, the mileage and the wear and tear. On the on the vehicles makes it so that at the point that the police police are done with it, it's it's got a lot of use on it. Yeah. So. Um, just one thing too, being a taxpayer myself in the town of Abington, um, before we were talking on the rubbish, I didn't want to jump in. The mm. town of Rockland actually, um, they send a, a a trash bill with with their water and sewer. Is that something Abington would look into? We do all the billing through for Rockland and Abington. So basically, each house, uh, if you have a barrel, I, I don't know what it is. I'm going to say it's $85 a quarter, but it's not on their tax rate. It's, it's I think that's uh, I think that's always been a um, hot hot um, hot topic as far as um, I, I I think. <laughs> You don't in, want the, to in, in the past, we've had overrides to be to, because yeah. people want to continue to have their trash picked up and have it in their taxes. Yeah. Um, so, it, I mean, I, has, I, it, I don't think anything's off the table, if, you know, when we're um, when they're looking at it. But I just from my own past experience on this board. Yeah, um, I wouldn't want it either. It's just another. Yeah. Bill I have to it, pay. It's, yeah. it's definitely been discussed, Joe. Yeah. So far, it's not something that has been done, but it's definitely been discussed. They've but talked so, about pay to so throw and just so everybody knows that the trash bill is now more than those two overrides. Mm. Right. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Let's keep recycling. Recycling is more expensive than trash. I know yeah, that's that, my point. That's that's He's great. looking okay. to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly Greg, my point. Greg wants the waiver to put everything in the trash. Um, what everybody tells me it's where it goes anyway right now <laughs> um joe i wanted to say uh, great first full year uh yes. on your own you had a lot to to deal with um yeah. you, know, you certainly weren't planning on a, a pandemic oh <laughs> so um it's all about the people that are around you we have good yeah. people around us town halls in here well, you did a great job with your budget too. We appreciate the time. Thank you. Much appreciate it, Joe. Anyone else have questions? All right, Joe, thank you so much for your time. Okay. See you at town meeting. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Going back to our agenda. Uh, before we get I just, to I, as a taxpayer person, I do want to speak up. I do remember this conversation many years ago of taking our trash and separate billing or whatever from water and sewer, but it was stated, I believe at the time that it would not lower our taxes. So, you know, it's built into our taxes now, but if you take it out and do it separate on water and sewer, 
it still wouldn't decrease our taxes. That I believe that was what was mentioned before when this was discussed. Just a little side note. I think there's a lot of dynamics that play into it too, because you have a family with, you know, 10 people living in the house and then you have a family with two people living in the house and, um, and just you know, me. making it, making it, <laughs> making it fair to, um, yeah. everybody all the way around. And um, I definitely do more recycle than I do trash being just the one person in the house, the more I fell more of my recycle bill than I have one little small plastic bag of trash. So. I bet Greg recycles more than he uh, has trash too. <laughs> <laughs> I actually separate it. And my, oh no, I do too. My, I have, I don't know if you guys know, but there are larger than normal recycling bins and yes. they gave one to me because we couldn't stop with it. So not that everybody doesn't have them. I just don't see them all in my neighborhood, but um, but then somebody was telling me, one of my employees was telling me that the recycling right now doesn't get recycled. It goes in the trash. They're, 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 I'm, I'm not sure of the validity of that. I've definitely heard that as well. Um, but I haven't been able to, to verify. There have been and rumors that, that some of the companies that are picking up recycling contracts are not actually recycling the recycle. Well, yeah. then they'd be making out, and I hope somebody would be reporting them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because <laughs> if we're paying, because then we're paying for, a, you know, a company, we're paying the extra, and uh, a company is, uh, I don't want to say embezzling, but, you know, that's. That's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty much what's going certainly, on, if that's what's going on. Def defrauding. Isn't, um, isn't um, sorry, when the person on trash was talking i uh, marty marty yeah. sorry thanks um i forgot to respond isn't there a way that we can well, whatever. it's for another day it's just every time i ask the same question um if we can join forces with rockland or other people to negotiate with these people the reason that i'm saying is because every time i ask the question they give me the same answer they don't care about our contract so if we got to if we went with ten other counties or, or counties or, or uh, little cities or towns municipalities whatever, municipalities like that would then matter. I, I agree that one doesn't matter, and it's difficult to negotiate with one, even though everybody does it every day when they buy a car and do all this other stuff. But whatever, I'll just go with it's difficult. But if you if we have ten together, don't aren't we in this these consortiums and stuff like that for other stuff? Why can't we do that for this? But you still have the legality of you can't get rid of recycling. I care less about the legality. I'm I think I think what off. Greg's referring to, Barbara, is is like Marty was talking about putting the RFP out. And, oh, and, like the cost, just in general, yes. to get try and get the cost down with the yeah. kind of bulk buying, yeah, uh, regionalization. Yep. Because at that point, you know, they would compete for your business. But what we've had people sit in front of us say and say is, well, they basically give us all the same price. Well, I mean, are they really going to do it for a 10, you know, if there were 10 towns or five towns, they'd want the five towns business, not just one anymore. It's five. So I don't know. I just, we have to start thinking outside the box for this because I asked a couple of years ago or last year or whatever, and I know everybody thought it was funny, but there will be a point at some dollar amount that we go, all right, this really isn't working. So. Definitely something you should throw by Maddie and, uh, you know, and I think that that is something that Scott has um, has at least considered, and I think Rick before him was also considering that and and looking into, but hadn't it hadn't come to anything as of yet. I can see I can see the headlines now. State of Massachusetts <laughs> doesn't recycle. <laughs> so. Um, Before we move on to liaison reports, uh, Sue, do we have updates on, I, you, you gave a, a bit of an update on certifying uh, free cash. Do we have an update on uh, budget to actuals or where we're at with the draft budget? Um, okay, so free cash is meek and um, we're probably looking at a negative free cash because of how we ended the um, June 
2020 year with $650,000 less than we expected. I am trying to get the DOR to, um, we're working with them to see if we can adjust some things, especially with uh, the COVID um, negative fund balance and you're supposed to get your money before June 30th. We didn't get our money until after October. So I'm working with them on trying to make it so that it's negative, not a negative free cash. And um, our budget expectations for 2022 are looking better than we expected. Um, we rework some numbers with local receipts and um, the governor's numbers came in for um, the cherry sheets, which were much better than we expected. We were looking at like a 10% cut and it's actually a little bit more than what we actually received in 2021. Um, so it's just a matter of looking at where we're standing and where, what we want to fund and you know, we have some negotiation uh, things going on. And so we're, we're basically working to finalizing the budget, but it doesn't look as bad as it as we expected based on our estimates. With that being said, um, I don't know if you were on when Sonia, we had a meeting with the departments um, and Sonia said that we're about 650,000 between July 1 and December 30th, lower than we were this time last year. So we might be looking at, oh, it looks good, but at the same time, we have to consider that we're $650,000 uh, lower in revenues than we were last year at this time. So it, it's, it's a moving target until we know that people are getting vaccinated and we're opening businesses again and, and things are back up and running. So that's the best I can say. Um, side note. Okay, Matt. Um, so I just want to make sure that um, we have contractual obligations um, with, with sick leave incentives for um, departments, uh, but we are not in any way encouraging anyone to come to work sick, correct? Absolutely not. If they're sick, they, they can stay home sick. Okay. And we're not like requiring them to um, use, uh, unless it's not work related. So if, if, if I were to come down with it because I came in contact with somebody at work, then I'm getting paid to stay home. But if you came down with it because you're going out to restaurants and, you know, I, I, you know, the restaurant called me and, you know, so, so there, there's, there's limitations to um, them being able to get paid for staying home based on the situation, but we're, we're definitely not encouraging people to come home, uh, come to, come, come to work sick. And we're still doing um, by appointment only at town hall and most of those appointments are outside the front door. Right. I just mean that, you know, in, in contracts, there's uh, an incentive, um, but that incentive, we're, 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 we're not, not um, we're not pushing that despite COVID. Thank you. Yeah. Correct. Correct. What do you mean by pushing it? Like, so it was mentioned in a couple of the, the budgets tonight, the sick leave buyback program and the, the benefits for not taking sick days. And Barbara is just pointing out that we are not uh, encouraging people to come in despite being sick so that they will meet those and get those payments. Oh, absolutely not. People, Marty is very adamant that if he knows that somebody has come in contact with a family member or a friend or whatever, you need to go home. It, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Even if you came in with a negative test two days after coming in contact, you, it, there's still that incubation period. Yep. And so he's like, nope, go home until 10 days from now, come back with another negative test. 
And, and truthfully, the, the amount is, is not so high that, that, you know, if, if you, you know, were set, that it would be worth, you know, I just want to make sure that it's clear that we're not, the town is not um, encouraging anyone to come into work sick just because um, they could receive a sick leave incentive. And when they go home and because they were in contact with somebody, they get paid or I'm assuming that just is sick time for them. No? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And any way you look at it, we're encouraging people who can work from home to work from home. I have one staff member in my office that she is completely able to come in on a Monday morning and do whatever she needs to get paperwork together and she can work from home the rest of the week. You know, we're so we're encouraging that. Thanks, so. All right, liaison reports. See a bunch of heads shaking. I got nothing. Correspondence. Deb's head is shaking. Yeah. Uh, minutes, we had minutes uh, very uh, elegantly prepared for our February 3rd meeting. Uh, Everyone. Motion to approve the meeting minutes of the February 3rd, 2021 meeting. Second. There's a motion by Barbara and a second by Russ. Is there any discussion on the meeting minutes from February 3rd? Without any further discussion, all those in favor of approving the meeting minutes for February 3rd? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Abstaining? Justin? The minutes are approved. Uh, Thank you. Our next meeting will not be next week during February vacation. It will be two weeks from now on February 24th. Uh, we will have with us on that date. Uh, I was just looking at this earlier and I should remember it, but I do not. So hold on one second. We will have with us the golf department, the South Shore Votech, and the accounting department. Sue, do you know if a representative from the accounting department will be able to? <laughs> no, she probably won't show up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that is what we have on tap for two weeks from tonight. Uh, are there any and other points or, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sue. Yeah, so Deb, you were mentioning a bill that came in today. I, I don't know if you, the, the, the bill for MMA or something like that. Oh yeah, I was just gonna talk to him about it later. Um, I think it was the, the Mass Municipal Finance Committee bill. It's our, our dues essentially. Yeah, yeah, I, I had talked to, I um, mentioned it at Sue, but I was just gonna wait till we were off camera, but. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, I, my own personal opinion is I would pass on that this year. I mean, for the last two years, we have not used anything at all from the MMFA, whatever it is. Yeah. We haven't gone to any meetings or conferences. We have not gotten the discs. Um, nobody's sure done anything. a conference this year. So. And I would say this year, they're not going to be doing any meetings because of the COVID. So, yep. I don't know. That's just, I'll um, scan it and fax it to you anyway, or email yep. it to you. But that's why I haven't really been on top of it. Does anyone else have any thoughts on the matter? It makes sense to me, um, as long as there's no, um, you know, uh, negative side to that, which, you know, I, I don't know whether there would be or wouldn't be. I think it's just uh, access to meetings and um, conferences and um, And I think it's what we're seeing some of the other departments around town are are doing cutting cutting in those areas that they can right do, so yeah so you can give me a race now <laughs> Deb says not to do it we won't do it yep. what um, Chris said if Deb says not to do it we won't do it <laughs> so all right I think we are in agreement there Anyone have anything else to bring up? Discussion points, motions? Motion to adjourn. Second. 
Thank Motion you. to adjourn from Barbara and a second from Russ. All those in favor of adjourning? Oh wait, Aye. Is, there, is there any discussion? Without any discussion, all those in favor of adjourning? Aye. It is unanimous. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much. See you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Good night all.